Hey, thanks for watching this episode on the blind spot monitor calibration on a 2021 Toyota Prius. You'll notice next to me, I do not have the DOS 3000 rack. Everything I have in front of me, except for the SCT cube, is what we need to do this. And that is all included with your DOS 3000 along with your ADOS link set. So you get everything you need to do to do these blind spot monitors on Toyotas where you're gonna use a little bit of a different procedure that you haven't seen before if you've watched any of these in the past. So we're gonna show you that next. This 2021 Prius had a brand new fascia installed. There was no damage found to any of the blind spot monitors. However, just like we've talked in the past, again, anytime these are removed, the fascia Toyota says, hey, we've gotta go ahead and make sure that the calibration on our blind spot monitors is in specification and everything's working before we return it to the customer. So we do have two on this vehicle. We have a master on the driver's side and on the passenger's, what's called the slave side. We're gonna show you the driver's side today. If you can do the driver's side, you can apply those same measurements and the same techniques we're gonna to do today to the passenger side. Relatively simple procedure, but we're gonna show you how it's done. Remember, ADOS calibrations are extremely important. These are going to be the lifeblood of a lot of shops in the near future. As more and more cars are becoming advanced, equipped with these advanced driver safety systems, this is going to be something you're gonna to wanna to do and get your shop and your technicians involved in. First thing we're gonna do is go ahead and hook up to our DLC, which I've done, and we're gonna go into diagnostics. I've selected auto, D, auto ID, we read the VIN on this car, and please cycle the ignition. We'll go into ADOS calibration, and of course we're gonna select blind spot monitoring on this vehicle. Okay, so we've got blind spot master and we've got blind spot slave. Like I said, your master is on your left side and the slave is on the passenger side. We're gonna walk through the adjustment on the master. And again, if you can do the master, you'll have no problem doing the slave side as well. So right now we've come up to our main screen. It's gone through its checking to see what tests are available. This is available. And we got the things that are needed for this one. And this is where we're gonna introduce the SCT 815 radar stand or the corner cube to do these blind spot monitoring. You'll also see we're going to do a couple other things that maybe you haven't seen in some previous videos, but very relevant to what you want to do on these in the future. Now again, this function is to adjust the blind spot monitoring system. We're going to walk through the complete steps to do this. It says here, mechanical vertical alignment of the radar sensor must be within OEM specifications before doing this. So there is a check in the service manual on to make sure that the blind spot monitor is okay. And when that rear fascia was removed, they did check that and make sure that it was in specifications. There was no damage to the actual sensor or mounting of it um, that they could see either. So we're just gonna go ahead and, and press continue as the body shop already did that for us before they put the fascia back on. Remember, it's gotta be uh, calibrated anytime a new sensor is installed or sensor or nearby parts or impacted in a collision. And again, this one was. Preconditions, we've said this a lot, you'll hear it every time, and your ADOS link will show this every time just to kind of remind you of the things that you've gotta be able to do. Remember, in this one, you need a little bit of space too. So we might not be in the normal setting you've seen us in the past. It's because I needed a little bit more space than usual to do this. And you're gonna see that when I set this up, how much distance we really need to set up our SCT cube to make sure that it's working as designed. So again, make sure uh, your tires are the correct size. Tires are inflated, good lighting, level surface. All of these are the important things that you've gotta do on any type of ADOS calibration you do on any vehicle. We're gonna do the guided tour summary so we know what we're doing and you guys can see that at home watching me do this and you'll also need to see how much space is required right here it gives you an idea of how much you need to really be able to do this and free of metal objects so you've got to have a good area to do this and this goes for the driver and the passenger side so what we're going to do now is set up the actual dimensions that we need for this the radar stand uh, measurement setup your x Y and W that are the what we're going to do, go ahead and measure right now. But the first thing I've got to do is get a center line in the vehicle. So the center line in the vehicle, what we're going to use is our plumb bob, and we're going to mark the using the Toyota emblems is what you're going to use front and back of the car directly in the center of the emblem. 
is where you're going to put your mark on the floor. And then we'll run a line or a tape, or in this case, I have a chalk line that I can run from front to back to make sure that I have it before I end up setting up my next measurement of 614. So I'm gonna get my measure or my, my center line real quick. Now that I've got my center line, I need my X axis first, and that's going to be 614. I already took the courtesy of running my, my chalk line down here a little while ago to get my center line and to save a few steps along the way. And I marked it at 614 using my chalk line that was here. So I had a chalk line that came back and I marked it at 614 right here. That's my first measurement that we need. From there, I need to go over from, from here to W. I need to go 3627. And again, saving a little bit of time. 3679 is my W one. So I'm gonna go from that same point where my rear emblem and my plumb bob met, and I'm gonna go over 3679. That is going to be my final location of where I'm going to set up my corner cue. So I've got my triangle set up. I went my 3679 was my last measurement right there. And that's where I'm going to set up the corner cube. So once we have that laid out, we can go ahead and uh, attach corner reflector in the zero position by using ruler on the back side of the stand. So let me grab that and show you what they're talking about. So before I set this in place, there is a zero location right here on the back. And slide that over to zero and we'll move on to the next step. So now I got to level out the stand. I'm going to place my SCT's corner cube in my position where I have it set up and I'm going to level it out. In your kit, you get this really handy tool that you can use by setting up here. It's got a level bubble right there. I'm going to set it right on my stand and using the three legs that I have in each corner, I'm gonna level this out. So my stand is leveled. I'm sitting at zero on my ruler right now. I still gotta get the height on this and I think that's what's gonna be next on our screen. So let's go ahead on over to and see what the ADOS link has to say as do next. So now we're going to get our height, we're going to use our stand, and we're also going to use our distance laser in the vertical position, and I'm going to get to 505 millimeters from the floor. This comes with each one of your ADOS Link or DOS 3000 kits, super handy tool to use. We're going to drop it right in here, the laser is going to point to the floor, and I'm going to get to 505. So right now I'm showing 903. I'm going to go ahead and move this down until I get that 505 and lock this into place. Once I get this down there, I can go ahead and remove my distance laser and the actual laser holder as well. And that'll just leave us with the triangle reflective cube or triangle left on the stand. Got my distance set, go ahead and remove the laser and your holder now and set them off to the side. Now, next thing we're gonna be doing is the actual calibration of it. Do not turn off the scan tool or condition switch. Do not move or shake the vehicle and close all the doors. We're good on that one. The specification we're looking for is negative 3.6 to 3.6. If it's not within specifications, make sure you set everything up all right. Make sure there's no reflective materials around. I'm actually gonna move the stand that I have the ADOS link on. I'm gonna move it out of the way. I like where everything's set. I have no metal objects around me. I am out of the way enough right now that I can go ahead and press continue. It's gone through its calibration right now. 
0.0 is what we're showing on our screen for successful calibration. That means everything is within specs and the blind spot monitoring system is operating as designed. What we would do next, we would wanna repeat the procedure for the passenger side or that slave side of the blind spot monitoring. Right now, this is successfully completed. I wanna go ahead and do the passenger side. And then of course, with any calibrations that you do on any of these vehicles, you always wanna make sure you test drive it and make sure that it's operating as designed before you return it to the customer. And of course, you can include that customer report that will be included after you successfully complete this that says that the calibration was done successfully, gives them the peace of mind that it was done right as well. As of right now, we're good to go. We're gonna hit the road and make sure that it's working and verify its operation. Just like any other ADOS calibration, it's important to remember to take it for a test drive to verify the systems are operating as designed after the calibration. We just went out for a test drive and both our passenger and driver side mirrors are lighting up as indicated when there's a car in our blind spot. System is operating as designed and I am confident to return this back to the customer that it is working safely. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for a lot more like this or check out some of our past ones for a lot more of this kind of ADOS calibrations that you can apply to your situation. Thanks again.